Welcome to Table Ready Gaming. I'm Dave Snodgrass, and today I'm excited to show you a simple way to bulletproof your miniatures and keep them safe at any game night. Now maybe you're new to miniature painting, or you're like me, you've been doing it for years. One thing that is going to be the bane of every hobbyist gamer out there is the dreaded Cheeto fingers. Probably said this before, but I've been doing tabletop gaming for a long time. Now personally, I've never had another player or opponent intentionally try to damage one of my models. However, there has been a few accidental slip ups over my gaming career, I guess is what we call it. Uh, and I mean, again, like I said, not intentional, but you have things like Cheeto dust from snacks, greasy fingers, food and otherwise, people spilling beverages, or just the ever classic, whoops, there it goes, butterfinger moment. So today, I'm gonna to show you a very simple tutorial on how to make your miniatures bulletproof so they can survive any gaming experience. Right, so for today's project, first thing we're gonna do is lay down some paper towels because it's gonna get a little messy. Uh, gloves, keep your hands nice and safe a uh, screwdriver, preferably a flathead, and an old paintbrush, or cheap paintbrush. Craftedly painted, lovely miniature. And then we're gonna be using this polyurethane as our sealant. It is an oil-based polyurethane, and that's why we wanna use an old, cheap brush. Right, so the first thing we're gonna do is dip the miniature. Oh my God, it's dead! To do that, we're gonna put it in halfway. Don't dip the entire miniature. And again, make sure you have your latex gloves on for this part, because this gets on your fingers, it's gonna become a complete mess. Take your old brush and brush it down the rest of the miniature. You wanna be really careful to get rid of places where this is collecting, because if you let this glob up, it will have a slight brownish tint. So on this miniature, for example, I focused really heavily on the blades, the face, and the underarms. Especially the back arm there, which has the bottle that she's holding back, because there's getting a lot of tension, kind of surface tension with this really thick polyurethane on, in her underarm. Just make sure you brush this all down so you're getting a nice, even, clear coat. You'll also notice that on this miniature, I decided to do this step before basing it. That's typically how I do encourage you to use these, to do this process. Right, so since this product is an oil-based polyurethane, you would typically have to use mineral spirits to clean this brush and clean off any surface that it gets onto. However, I think that's just a huge hassle, and personally, I just buy cheap brushes in bulk off Amazon.com. And to get the most value out of this brush, what I'll do is make sure that I seal a bunch of models in one go. For example, today I'm also sealing some rats from Reaper Miniatures. Now some of the more perceptive of you might notice the basing for these rats is already complete. And I have just said that typically I'll wait to the end of this process before basing a miniature. Well, the code of miniature painting... The code is more what you call now that we're done painting those rats, it's really easy cleanup. Double kill. And since I used a cheap brush off Amazon, the bristles were literally falling out by this point. Triple kill. So once you're done sealing a miniature and it dries, the miniature is going to be super glossy. But we're going to go ahead and tone that down on the next step. For this, I use a tester's matte coat. This is some of the best spray sealer on the market. After the matte varnish has been applied, uh, you'll see a very clear matte cover, color again, and we'll get rid of all that glossiness. Now, if you decided to use technical paints, this is when you would apply them. For example, on this miniature, we're gonna start putting a gloss coat on her bottles so they have a nice shine to them and look kind of like glass. So once that's done, we're also gonna put some blood for the blood gut on the blade, just to show kind of how you use technical steps after sealing this miniature. Maybe she stabbed one of the rats. Right, so the next part for this is we're just gonna do the basic basing for this. And again, I'm using my Vallejo um, 
facing pumice, uh, dark brown, and we're just gonna put that all over the base of the miniature. And the next step is just paint the side of the base a nice dark black. This creates a nice frame for the miniature and I really like the look of it. And then we'll just finish off the miniature's base by putting down some watered down Elmer's glue or PVA glue and some grass from Woodland Scenic. So there you have it. That's how I bulletproof my miniatures for the gaming table. Super simple, but highly effective. Now typically I will only do this step on a metal miniature, whether it's pewter or lead. I don't so much worry about this for plastic or resin. In that case, I'll just do the simple matte varnish and that seems to hold up just fine. One other thing you might notice with this technique is over time that matte varnish starts to rub off and your miniature will start to become glossy again. This is just normal wear and tear and nothing to be alarmed about. If you do see this happen, make sure you just take another pass with a matte varnish can and it'll clear that right up. Great advice. Right, so there you have it. A simple but effective way to protect your miniatures at the gaming table. Personally, I use this technique on all my lead and pewter miniatures. I don't so much worry about it for resin and plastic because they don't seem to have the chipping that uh, a metal miniature does. So I'll just usually just do the matte varnish on those and not worry about the polyurethane dip. If you do do this technique on your miniatures, there's a few things to keep in mind. One, obviously you can't put any flock or soft basing material before you dip the miniature as that'll be covered and completely ruined by the polyurethane. Second, you will notice that there might be a small color shift when you put the polyurethane on. So I, if you're doing anything for like showcase painting or competitive painting, you may not want to use this basing technique. But the the theme of this channel is how to get miniatures on the tabletop and how to play with your plastic dudes and your little miniature guys. So that's not something I personally worry about. And lastly, over time, you might start to notice that gloss coat coming through as the matte coat we put on last starts to rub off. This is nothing to worry about. This is just normal wear and tear. To fix this, just take another pass with your matte uh, varnish and it'll clear that right up. Plus, this is a great early detection system, letting you know that popular miniatures like player characters or favorite NPCs are starting to get worn out as that matte varnish is starting to rub off. So there's a few other techniques that I'd like to share with you to help your miniatures keep looking great from game to game. First off, encourage your players to move the miniature at the base and not from the top. This can help prevent like breaking the legs and stuff like that. Also. Just point out to people that you have about eight to six hours, you know, six to eight hours on each one of these little guys that you've painted. And while frankly you have fun doing it, uh, it doesn't mean you want to just repaint the same guy over and over and over. Like I said earlier, I've never had a player intentionally try to damage any of the stuff that I've brought to the gaming table. Just time to time accidents happen, so we take precautions to protect ourselves. Right, and as all my tutorials, I have affiliate links down below where you can purchase all of the supplies I've used in this video. Each purchase, I do earn a small commission from Amazon, so that does go into supporting the channel and helps me bring more content to you. The only thing I wasn't able to find a link for was the polyurethane, but you can pick this up at most uh, hardware stores, Home Depot, Lowe's, Ace, places like that. Any local hardware store should carry that polyurethane, and you shouldn't struggle finding that. Plus, you buy one jar, and you pretty much have enough forever. Uh, I think I've bought, mm, two jars in the 12 years that I've been doing this, and really the only time I bought it is because I think I lost it in a move. Also, I'm on other social media accounts, primarily Instagram and Facebook, and you can see links to those accounts down below if you'd like to see some more of my work. Hey, if you're enjoying this content and you'd like to be part of the Table Ready Gaming community, please subscribe and hit the notification button. That way you're gonna see new videos as they come out. Lastly, please help me keep the great YouTube overlord happy and help this video in the algorithm by hitting that like button. That's pretty much all I have for today. Again, I'm Dave Snodgrass. This is Table Ready Gaming. Please don't forget to subscribe. Perhaps check out another video on my channel that YouTube thinks you would enjoy or check out another random D&D video that I found from another YouTuber that I thought was kind of cool. Until next time, I'm Dave Snodgrass. This is Table Ready Gaming. Thank you so much for watching.